Hello guys, Chris here, welcome back to another video in this one my friends, I'm gonna be testing the Intel N100 in GTA 5. This is a very low end chip by Intel of course, it has a 6 watt TDP but in this system which is the Chewy High 10 Max, it's a tablet and a PC at the same time, it is actually unlocked up to 15 watts of power which makes a big difference in games and you can see it's a quad core right here in CPU Z and the GPU is the Intel U. UHD graphics with 24 execution units right there. We're also utilizing the latest drivers from Intel. They are from September 13, 2024. And over on the left, you can see the Intel N100 once again, and that we're running 12 gigabytes of RAM with it. This is DDR5, it's 4,000 mega transfers per second, and it's not in like dual channel or anything because the CPU itself doesn't support dual channel RAM. So even if you have two sticks, it will only run in single single channel. That's a very big limitation for gaming, but well, let's see how this does. By the way, if you are interested, I have done a little unboxing video in the second channel. I'll link it down below in the description where I go over the looks of it and the ports and so on. So yeah, just check it out if you haven't already. Let's play the game now. Shall we? Let's go for the settings first. I am starting at 1080p using DirectX 11. I'm also going to try it at lower resolutions as well as higher resolutions in this video. Oh yes. And over here we're using the lowest settings possible because, well, this is a very low end chip once again. Advanced graphics are all turned off and let's do this. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, this is, yep. Well, it's kind of expected from such a chip, right? <laughs> and uh, the 24 four execution units, Intel UHD graphics, you know, this is, it's not a gaming machine whatsoever, so, yeah, getting 20-something FPS is kind of what I was expecting, although, it doesn't really stutter or anything, so at least there's that. If we lower the resolution, there's a blue car over there. I really want it, because this is an Intel video. Oh, it's, it's a terrible one, I guess, well... It's the N100 <laughs> for gaming, of course. For everything else, this little machine is actually quite nice. Anyway, even with these very cinematic frame rates, I think we, we can definitely go and see Jack, you know. Again, since it doesn't stutter at all, it makes me believe that it will become very playable at like maybe 720p or 800 by 600. And I know actually that it will be playable at 720p because, oh my God, <laughs> I have already tested another Chewy machine with the exact same specs in GTA 5 and it was playing well at 720p. And also, we can disable the shadows. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that a little bit late. Jesus. Okay. Um, maybe that car is kind of blue, right? More green than blue. Uh, but it would probably be better. I'm not sure, guys. Well, let's go back to this car again. <laughs> you know what? This is not absolutely terrible, right? It's definitely a low-end machine. It definitely is not providing a good experience at all here. But... I've had worse. <laughs> With like the NVIDIA G100, for example, or even GeForce 210, this is faster in both of those GPUs, so at least there's that, and it is at 1080p resolution still. Hello, Jacqueline! I wanted to see Jack, I'm not sure what you're doing here every time, like... <sighs> anyway, around here, yeah, dropping from 20 FPS gets extremely intensive, and there's Bob! God, wait, God! Come on! No, I can't! Ugh, the FPS are too low! There we go! Come on! Goodbye, Bob! <laughs> Alrighty, guys, it's been a while, but we're back killing Bob and seeing Jack. Well, not yet, but yeah. <laughs> and playing GTA 5, which is awesome. Okay, let's stop it right there. 27 average and 18 1% lows. It's a little bit of a shame because I think if this chip supported dual channel RAM, it would be so much better, but. Well, it only supports single channel. That's a very big limitation there. Now, I'm curious to see what it can do at 900p resolution because, well, we were very, very close to that 30 FPS mark at 1080p and this is not a big drop off from 1080p resolution like 720p is. So here we go, we're above 30 FPS now. That feels all right. It's another blue car, so we're gonna change cars right now. Uh, hello, police, no, stop doing that. 
that to me. Okay, I'm just here walking around, benchmarking. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, all right? Don't do that to me. All right, here we go, guys. We got a little bit of a stutter there. Sometimes, yeah, there we go, another one. Not sure why that's happening. I mean, CPU usage is going up to 100% sometimes when it happens, so... It could be that, maybe because we're driving really fast. Kind of doesn't make sense, though, because previously we were also driver driving really fast. Uh, but yeah, it, <laughs> I guess you can expect a little bit of stuttering, maybe. Also, let's talk about those temperatures. This, this is a tablet, guys. Like, I'm going to show it to you. Hopefully not going to break anything for the video because it's... Uh, attached to the capture card and stuff this is a very slim tablet okay with a detachable keyboard which is attached at the moment i'm playing with it and uh, it's only at 72 degrees celsius now 75 sometimes that's very impressive thermals are really impressive let me check out the sound the noise it's making Oh, that's good, guys. It's pretty quiet, this machine. Obviously, again, gaming performance pretty terrible, but for a day-to-day -day machine, it's, it's pretty all right, I would say. And with those temperatures maxing out at, what, 77 degrees Celsius, pretty impressive stuff. Once again, Chewy does know what they're doing. Oh, you know what I think is happening and what's causing the stutters, basically? It's the lack of VRAM slash RAM. Because if you take a look at the VRAM, it's using 2.2 gigabytes, somewhere around that. And the RAM is at 11.8. And uh, I think it already swapped some things. And whenever it is stuttering like crazy, one of those big drops, you know, it's swapping things that should be on RAM into the SSD instead, using page file on the SSD. Because that's what happens when you run out of RAM. So with a 16 gigabyte config, configuration it's probably going to be smooth without any stuttering but it will still get the same fps on average basically and right now since it already swapped everything that it needed to swap it is actually pretty smooth uh, but yeah I, I didn't really think about this because usually ram isn't a problem in gta 5 it's just that we got 12 gigs for windows 11 and gta and the GPU as well, because the GPU doesn't have dedicated VRAM. But anyways, it's still playable, it's still impressive that we can have this kind of performance with a tablet machine <laughs> that's not meant for gaming, it's like 300 bucks as well. Uh, yeah, it's kind of fun and it can be enjoyable in some GTA, as you can see. I wonder what it can do in like Valorant, for example, which I don't think I tested previously. But yeah, overall, it is an enjoyable experience here. 34 FPS average with a few stutters, but it is what it is. <laughs> you probably got to live with that and you probably can live with that if you have a machine like this. It's certainly better than playing the game on like a GeForce 210 once again and I've heard some people, or should I say some maniacs, <laughs> that played this game for hours and hours on a GeForce 210. So. Yeah, if, if they could do it, I think you can probably play the game in, in this machine as well. Anyway, now we're playing it at 720p resolution. And I think since we're not putting so much strain on the GPU, because the resolution went down a lot right now, we are bottlenecking the GPU slightly with this CPU. You can see that the CPU is hitting 100% CPU usage very, very often. Obviously, in a situation like this, the RAM also plays a part. Uh, so with dual channel RAM, things would definitely improve still, okay? Uh, and it would also improve CPU performance here. Um, but yeah, it, it isn't too bad. It's still a somewhat playable experience. VRAM usage went down because this is 720p resolution now, uh, so it Shit. doesn't really consume as much VRAM or RAM apparently, and the RAM is at 11.5 gigabytes instead of 11.8, 11.9, so I guess it's not causing the game to stutter as much as it did previously at 900p. And 1080p was actually surprisingly smooth. Okay, now it's starting to swap, I think, or doing something else. I don't know. Could also be the Intel drivers, but I I doubt it. Uh, let's go. Can we see Jack this time around? Hello, Jack. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Oh, 
Beautiful to see you, friend. Around here, things become GPU bound again with 100% GPU usage, as you can see, and the FPS are still above 30 consistently. Goodbye, Bob, whoever you are, and Bob's friend. I mean, if you are Bob's friend, you're probably no good, right? So, yeah, it's good that we got rid of them both. It's a little bit of micro stuttering here and there, which is annoying, like right now, for example. It's definitely happening. You can see the frame time graph is more spiky than usual. There's a big one right there. Yeah, this is pretty bad <laughs> because of the CPU right now. So I'm going to stop it. Okay. And I think I will lock it to 30 FPS. The way I'm going to do that is with VSync inside of the game. So if you turn it on, you lock the FPS to the monitor's refresh rate, which is 60 hertz at the moment. So I'll set it to half, which will lock it to 30 hertz. And now we have a smooth frame time graph. Look at that, guys. No stuttering issues, no problem. 1% lows should be pretty close to 30 since it's not moving the frame rate at all at the moment. And this is the proper way to do it in a low-end machine like this one with the limitations that it has, okay? Locking the FPS is always a great idea in these machines if you can sustain 30 plus FPS all of the time, right? If you can lock it to 30, it's going to stay at 30 all of the time. Even in the bushy areas, it didn't drop as you saw, so still going to be 30 there. And it is now a smooth experience. Well, not buttery smooth because it's not 60 FPS, of course, but it is smooth, right? Even here. We saw a lot of stuttering happening here at 900p resolution, not the bigger spikes that I'm talking about, it's like the, the micro stutters that we were seeing in the graph, uh, but it's not happening now. And the fact that we kept the performance here, the FPS, means that the temperatures will also go down, GPU usage and clock speeds are also fluctuating a little bit because, again, it's locked 30 frames per second, it doesn't need to work as hard, and the CPU as well, the usage isn't maxing out, so you're not going to have major issues. That was a major issue, but I guess we can't really get rid of those bigger stutters, unfortunately. They'll happen from time to time, every couple of minutes or so, I guess. Now, this is with the 15-watt N100, and if yours only has a 6-watt N100, which uh, there are some machines that only have this CPU at 6 watts, which is the rated TDP, actually, it will be a different story. Okay, you might not be able to play this game even at like 800 by 600 or even lower than that using resolution scale. It's, it's probably going to run like complete crap. <laughs> uh, but hey, with this machine in particular, the Chewy i10 Max, it runs. All right, I'm going to stop it right there, guys, and I'm going to turn off the V-Sync, so unlocking the FPS again. And now I dropped it down to 800 by 600 resolution. So these are actually the lowest settings in the game if you don't mess around with advanced graphics and frame scaling, which is resolution scaling. And I don't think it's going to be needed to mess around with that, you know, because it already provided a stable and smooth experience at 720p. Well, smooth-ish. Uh, but hey, if you want even higher FPS, and you don't mind having micro stuttering issues because of unlocked FPS and full CPU usage, you can get pretty close to getting 60 FPS in this game, guys. It feels very smooth in this area, but I feel like it's going to start uh, stuttering quite a lot when we get to the city area with more NPCs and more cars around, but... Yeah, this is not bad, right? 40s, we're almost seeing Jack, wait a second, guys, God damn it, okay, okay, no, it's fine, it's fine, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> All right, it's, you're okay, you're okay, just run away, please, run, uh, yeah. oh boy, yeah, I, I think I run somewhere else over, yes, I did. Um, let's go, keep on going, got the police on us as well, which is, I guess, CPU intensive for this system. <laughs> Because <laughs> we got more NPCs after us now. Jack's Hill is also no problem. Since it is on the lowest settings, the grass isn't too intensive. So it's getting like 60s sometimes and 70s as well. Pretty good stuff. And uh, th th which one is Jack's Hill? I'm, I'm lost right now, guys. What the heck? 
This is not Jack's Hill. Where am I? <laughs> I am I'm really confused guys. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Let's go. I'm so, what? I'm sorry, <laughs> it's all good <laughs> He's okay <laughs> Yes, he is he's, he's going up there. All right. This is Jack's Hill this one. All right, but okay It is playable as you can see guys if you're in a little bit higher FPS than 720p It's possible to have it at 800 by 600 even without making the game look like GTA San Andreas speaking of we should probably do that. And the way we're going to do that is by disabling the shadows. There's only normal, uh, high and very high settings here. You can't really disable through this menu, but you can go into the config files and disable it there. Okay, to find the config files, you gotta go to your documents folder, Rockstar Games, GTA 5, and this is the one right here, settings. And you gotta open that with notepad or edit in notepad. And you gotta find the shadow quality setting right here, which is set to one. All you gotta do is type zero there instead of one, save it, get out, Get into the game and now you won't have shadows in your GTA 5. Okay, we're back to 1080p resolution, guys, but now with the shadow quality set to undefined, so it is disabled at the moment. Alrighty, and see what I meant by turning GTA 5 into GTA San Andreas? Yep, this game without shadows is completely different in terms of how it looks, and it also has quite a lot more FPS, as you can see. It's in the 30s now at 1080p resolution, although it still drops into the 20s, and it's pretty crappy of an experience overall because of it. <laughs> I've been mean, outside... Yeah, sometimes it touches 30 FPS, but it's not staying at 30 FPS. The averages might be at like 28 or 29, actually, after a while. Big stutter there, it starts. <laughs> uh, but uh, disabling shadows also lowers our VRAM usage by a little bit, so maybe it won't start stuttering like crazy, having those huge spikes here and there a little later, you know? And now we're driving really fast. And it's still keeping those 30 frames per second right now without any micro stuttering issues, as you can see. So it will change the experience completely at 1080p resolution to the point where it's now actually playable to some people. Although, would you do this? Would, just to keep the resolution high, would you play without shadows in GTA 5? Because... It makes a huge difference, once again. Let's get a, a, a blue card. Hello, Jack! Oh, you're looking beautiful. Did you shower today? I think he did. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Maybe he went to the water there. Uh, sometimes he goes there. I have seen him in one of the videos. <laughs> I followed him. He went to, to the sea. Yeah, it was beautiful. Goodbye, Bob! Go Bye, Bob! There we go. There we go. All right. So it still drops down into the lower 20s, but not from 20 like we saw previously. And in the end, in the end, it doesn't even matter. No. <laughs> in the end, it actually achieved 31 FPS on average, which is a bit impressive and kind of unexpected, I guess. Let's drop it down to 720p just to play like that for a little bit. I think you should probably use 720p with a chip like this. Here we go, 720p is now applied without shadows. Normal settings are the lowest settings. I'm not sure if I told you this, but uh, sometimes I see some people in the comments saying, ah, this is definitely going to be playable on low settings. Of course, on normal settings, it's not playable because it's a very low-end GPU, and I'm testing with very low-end GPUs, you know? But no, this is these are lowest settings in this particular title. They just called them normal settings for some reason. Anyway, as you can see, yeah, it still has those little frame time spikes here and there. I, I, I stopped talking about that because, you know... It bothers me more when I mention it, <laughs> maybe, and when I'm looking at the frame time graph. If I'm just playing the game, yeah, it stutters, but I can deal with it in a machine like this, you know? If it was on a high-end PC, obviously stutters should not be happening, <laughs> but here... Uh, it's expected once again, so I'm not mad about it. And uh, yeah, this improves our FPS by a little bit more than what we saw previously at 720p, just disabling the shadows and makes it somewhat stable, like a little bit more stable than it was before. So yeah, guys, I think that's it for reasonable resolutions. 
Let's go up to 4K. <laughs> Here we go, it's 3840 by 2160 res, guys. 4K resolution, it's four times the pixel count as 1080p. No shadows, normal settings. Takes a while to get to the bottom of the uh, options menu here. <laughs> Takes a while to get out of the menu as well. And here we go. At least we can have double digits. And at least it doesn't stop completely right it is playing the game it's not crashing at least not yet <laughs> so it handles well, you could say that it handles 4k gaming or it it walks 4k gaming because it doesn't run 4k gaming at all <laughs> right it is terrible the name in the gpu is a bit misleading but i guess it's just because it supports uhd resolutions in windows it doesn't game at UHD resolution. So <laughs> if you wanted to game at UHD on an Intel UHD graphics, yeah, as you can see, it's not gonna happen. At least in this one, the 24 execution units. But other UHD graphics are also pretty crappy, as you probably know already. And I have tested even like the UHD 770. It's probably the best UHD graphics. <laughs> and yeah, it was still pretty terrible. Although quite a lot better than this. I think it was doing 60 plus at 720p in this game with shadows enabled. So there's that pretty decent, right? Anyway, that's been it. I'm not gonna bother you longer with this slideshow of an experience. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have enjoyed it. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.